Hi there you guys and welcome to the Roman Gazette. This week I'm battling the elements so you don't have to, to investigate three important strategic points on the Roman road from York to Carlisle, specifically in the area of Stainmore. Our first strategic Roman outpost is Bruff Castle. Everything you can see here is Norman or later. So why am I here? This is not the Norman Gazette. So why are we here? I hear you screaming at your devices. The name of this castle and the accompanying town, Bruff, reflects the word Burr, B-U-R-G, sometimes B-U-R-G-H, Burr. And that is telling us that the castle was built on the site of a Roman fort. These earthworks that we see here and the platform that you can see uh, here, not there, running round is the platform of the Roman fort. The Roman fort of Verteris housed some 500 people. Many of them are, have been identified as having come from Turkey. Can you imagine that? You join the Roman legion in Turkey and you look forward to exciting expeditions in the Mediterranean and North Africa, beautiful hot places, and you end up in Northern Britain. Now we'll go and get a bit interactive and see if we can find any traces of the Roman structure. It really is dominated by the later castle and a massive amount of, oh, I just need to get my leg, oh, oh, a massive amount of work was done here when William Rufus reclaimed this part of Britain from the Scottish. So the embankment that we're on here and the Waterfield ditch that you can see is all from that Norman conquest period. But if we look over here, and if you look in here, not here, if you look here, there's some Roman earthworks. But I think most interestingly, if we scan round here, we can see the raised platform that the Romans sculpted and used to build their frankly impressive fort, Roman earthworks. That's our first strategic Roman outpost. Let's get on to the next one. As we leave the castle, we can pick up the traffic on the Roman road, the Stainmore Roman road, and we are now heading up there. The second strategic outpost is one that's a little bit more difficult to get to. And you can see here that I'm walking along this fine stretch of unimproved Roman road. A beautiful agar, lovely, lovely agar. And the ground here really is as the Romans left it. Ditches all intact and working. Hopefully you can see from under my brolly this fine uh, section of the Stainmore Roman Road leads up to this point here where we have a divide. The, you can see the clear agar of the Roman Road there and you can see what's more like a pack horse trail, peasants sort of trail there. And we're going to go down that peasants trail for now. Uh, on closer examination, the peasants trail does have some Roman characteristics. Now the Stainmore Roman road moved around a lot. So maybe there were two versions of the road up here on this desolate summit. Now I'm struggling a bit in these atrocious conditions to find what we're actually looking for. And I may have actually walked past it. I'm not sure. Like a clot, I have left the map in the car. But anyhow, it gives us an opportunity to look at this fine unmolested Roman road. Okay, there's a wall built through the middle of it, but in some ways that helps define the impressive agar. And no, I haven't got it wrong. I haven't gone past it. The thing that distracted me earlier was clearly just some Anglo-Saxon peasantry stuff. But I don't know if you can see 
over there to the left of the fine Roman road there is a structure let's go and take a look to it we are going into one of the entrances to what the later peoples of this area the anglo-saxons no doubt decided would be called maiden castle but it is actually a roman fortlet through the middle of the fort is this old pack horse trail and the experts think that came later but obviously the roman legionnaires did have to ha come in here somehow now i'd planned some really funky uh, videography up here but in these conditions that's not going to happen so i'm stood in the middle of the roman fortlet and i'm just going to scan round and show you the outer boundaries i'm soaked through now there's a lot of stonework in this embankment which is very squee and despite the fact that it's peeing down you get something of a sense of the vantage point that this fortlet had commanding the lower level of the roman road through stainmore this sunken trackway that you can see here which if i scan around here you can see comes through the embankment and then runs right the way through the middle of the fortlet hopefully you can see that there uh, yeah as i say the experts don't know whether that's a trackway that was put there by the romans or whether that came later when all the peasants and vikings and all those sort of people overran the place when the romans left what a place i'll put some sort of overlay up to show you the square shape of it but look at the view that it's got down there and then the embankment running up that way my umbrella's just gone well guys what a place i'm just sorry that i've not been able to do any really fancy filming for you here definitely one to return to another day now i was going to do three of these strategic roman outposts i've driven up to ray cross it's snowing it's rainy it's windy it's pathless terrain i'm already soaked through from the second strategic roman outpost so i'll take the gopro out show you ray cross itself which is in the lay-by uh, but we're not the anglo-saxon gazette so we won't dwell on that ray cross is a really big roman camp and it actually predates the roman road itself you can see it runs through the bottom uh, end of it there's even a bronze age stone circle there which perhaps the romans didn't even notice but we're not the bronze age gazette so we're not gonna dwell on that either. It's been tough this vlog, maybe I need to start doing trivial stuff like everybody else. So I hope you enjoyed that. Make sure you like and subscribe, all that sort of stuff. Next Sunday, see you there. Have you heard about the Roman gladiator who went into a bar and said, I'll have five pints, please. <laughs>